Netflix just released a new movie this year for all the moms that watched Frosty the Snowman recently and thought to themselves, you know, this is good, but it would be even better if Frosty was a hot thirst trap. And wouldn't you know it, my wife falls into that camp. So I was forced to watch this film with her and I have some thoughts. Hot Frosty is the name of this film, I guess we'll call it, and it stars Hallmark royalty Lacey Chabert. Now, you did hear me correctly. I said Hallmark royalty, but this is actually a Netflix vehicle. It sounds like Hallmark's trying to age Lacey out of the films, so she's found a nice, comfortable home right here on Netflix, where she can star in another 864 holiday films. But Lacey finds herself in a bit of a different Christmas movie this time. It's not your standard business guy moves to a small town, falls in love with the local barista who he knew back in high school, and it also turns out he's a prince, and they move into a castle together. You know, that old chestnut? No, this one sees our girl Lacey, who I guess has a character name, but she is legitimately the same in every single movie, which is to say, a complete blank slate, perfectly pleasant charitable individual who really has zero range of emotion outside of I look pretty here and I look pretty there. I'm pretty pretty, I'm sad pretty, I'm happy pretty. There's a, you can see the pattern. The film is going to call this automaton Kathy. Kathy lives in a small town and she runs the local diner very well, mind you, even though she's had some loss in her life, specifically that of a husband, who instead of getting a present under the Christmas tree last year, Got some cancer. And speaking of cancer, if you find yourself enjoying this video, you should know that I review movies every single week, up and down, from the big name ones to whatever this is on Netflix. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want. Like this video if you find yourself having a good time. And let's continue on. Oh, and also, there will be spoilers because, you know, it's, it's hot frosty. You know, what are we doing here even? Before I go any further into the plot, this movie is an hour and a half long. Quick, quick, easy breezy, hour and a half. It's a TV movie, so it doesn't have a conventional rating. If I were to throw one out there, I would say PG. You are going to get some sexual innuendos from time to time. There is some shirtless hunking shots of our lead. But outside of that, this is another carbon copy fake Hallmark movie. Anyway, back to the storyline. Kathy has let herself go. She's depressed. She misses her husband. And by let herself go, I mean she's let her house go. The ceiling is leaking, the heat doesn't work, so it's freezing cold in this place. There's a broken step that Phil didn't fix. Damn it, Phil, fix the step. And she goes to bed fully make up every night, wakes up the next day, doesn't shower, and goes straight to work, still looking perfect. She's really let herself go. Mm. She's keeping her head down and she's focusing on work. Pedal to the metal. After a hard day's shift, she takes some fresh meals over to the local apothecary store. Actually, I don't know if there was any medicines or anything. It might have just been a clothing store. Either way, a couple folks run the place, ma and pa situation. She brings over some hot meals. They appreciate it, of course. She's a perfect person in all sense of the word. But they can tell the chips are down in her life. And no, no one has checked in on her since her husband died. No one has seemed to lend a hand to help fix the stuff in her place, even though she clearly goes out of her way for everybody else in this town. They all know her, they all really like her. But yeah, I, I guess no one thought to check in. You know, maybe see if the roof needs some repair. Maybe some of those shingles could be nailed down. Maybe that step could be, well, we'll get there. And this is the part where the gift wrap breaks down. A brand new, Beautiful new red scarf just came in, and even though it doesn't have the magic of a top hat, it still works the same way. There's a whole song and dance about being out in the cold and someone coming along to save the day or something. She listens, she takes the scarf, and she sees a smoking hot, which is funny because it's smoking cold, that doesn't make sense, snowman, a literal sculpture of a hulking man outside in the cold. She puts the scarf around him and... Timothy Chalamet's dad comes to life right after she leaves. Ass naked, head to toe, Will Ferrell, we're going streaking! And he runs around, breaks into that store that she went to earlier, grabs a pair of overalls, and he's ready to go. And so the rest of the film is going to be Lacey's character and him getting to snow each other. 
in snow ways than one, if you catch my drift. <laughs> uh, no, this is a fake Hallmark movie. So there's not going to be any sort of, you know, carrots going into holes or anything. I prefer Jack Frost because there is at least a lovemaking scene in the shower in that film. I don't, maybe lovemaking isn't the right term to use. No, as much as uh, Catherine might want to fondle his snowballs, she's still trying to get over that loss. And now she's left with an empty hole, waiting for someone or something to fill it. I hear how that sounds. Dustin Mulligan is our handsome lead here. He's playing Jack Frost, AKA Jack the Snowman, AKA Derek Zoolander, because this guy has the whole male model look to him and he's about as dumb as a box of rocks. He does know how to speak English very well, but he doesn't understand all the nuance. That's nothing a little YouTube can't solve. He finds himself easily being able to grasp concepts like making a pizza, fixing a stair, securing a roof, taping and mudding a ceiling with fresh drywall, painting that ceiling, decorating the place for Christmas. And he is of course able to achieve this stuff all in the same day, all within the span of like four hours because in the afternoon he has to go over and help some of the other hungry cougars who want a little piece of that pie. Snow way, snow how would I be able to accomplish that? And don't think for a second this isn't propaganda. My wife's watching that movie, looking over at me going, oh, well, he fixed the step, no problem. Where the hell have you been? He, he got all this stuff in like 20 minutes. You claim it takes you hours for that shit to dry on the ceiling so you can put a new coat of paint on it. The antagonist of this picture. That's right, there is an antagonist here. It's Sheriff Nathaniel Hunter, played by Craig Robinson, AKA Daryl, for most of you from The Office. And I think the writer maybe enjoyed him on The Office when he did that episode on the keyboard, singing a Dunder Mifflin theme song, which I absolutely hated and I love The Office, but that stuff was cringy as shit to me. No, they liked it and they're gonna bring it back for this film. And he's gonna have a couple scenes where he's playing this keyboard, including a really, Really bizarre song at the end where they're showing the outtakes that are almost never funny and they're accompanied by this song that's kind of dark and grim sound, like sinister sounding. It doesn't line up with the fact that we're supposed to be laughing, but I'm not going to say it's terrible because I honestly think, and keep in mind, I know very little about Hallmark Christmas movies outside of what I see in the background on TVs throughout my house all hours of the day. This was all right for one of those. If we're grading on a curve, which we absolutely are here, friends, then this one was easily watchable, I thought. Stupid, of course. Cliché, absolutely. Craig Robinson can be funny as this police officer. Uh, I found the putting on the shades and taking them off to be completely lame and contrived and done like a bunch of times much funnier, but you know, that that's the thing we have here. Bottom of the barrel humor. And by the end of it, he does get a little much. He becomes unlikable. Dustin as Jack is, you know, he's fine. He's harmless. He's just a friendly guy trying to understand what's going on. And Lacey's Lacey, you know, she's lovable. She's just the likable friend you have that doesn't push any ideas on you. Doesn't speak up when you're talking about politics or religion or anything that has even like a, a small amount of controversy that could give her her own unique personality and identity. No, instead, she is a stock person you put in the room and everyone can say, I like that one. I like her. I can't put my finger on it, but she's a good kid. If you were looking for Hot Frosty to be something a little bit more scandalous, a little bit more naughty for the holidays, you're going to be disappointed. All right, outside of him popping off the tea a few times, there's just really nothing else here. Let's just say Kathy's not gonna be taking a puff out of Frosty's corn cob pipe. I said what I needed to say. I think I milked this out plenty long. Let me know your thoughts. Did you watch this? Did you have a good time? Did you, for some reason, expect more? Uh, or did you think it, it hit exactly what you wanted? Please think about subscribing to the channel. If you like the video, like it. Put a comment below. It helps with the algorithm, I think. I'm not sure, uh, obviously I'm not an expert, but I would appreciate any support you could give. If you love what I'm doing, if you like the channel, maybe think about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, a bunch of different tier levels. It's a beautiful way to help support this channel and what a lovely Christmas gesture it would be. All right, ho -ho, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.